Climate crisis is upon us. Ecosystems around the globe are at high risk, and the effects are starting to show. A surge in farming has threatened small plant species in New South Wales and is placing ecosystems at risk. Join us as we try to understand what's causing this and why. First up, threatened ecosystems. Mount Cannibolis, near Orange in Australia's central west, is one of the most densely populated environments in the country, with over 1,000 species. According to the New South Wales Farmers Association, this has made the region one of the state's most important agricultural districts, with about $2 billion in economic contributions each year. However, in the last decade, the area has seen 18 threatened species and 4 endangered species. We've all studied in school that microorganisms such as lichens and mosses play an important part in the environment. Many of these are microscopic organisms that you can't even see with the naked eye, but they make all the difference to the ecosystem. How, you ask? They capture moisture and soil, stabilizing the entire environment in the process, and they aid wildlife in making it easier for other plants to grow in that region. A 1,672 hectare state conservation reserve surrounds Mount Cannibolis. The region's lush, fertile soil and altitude were created by a volcanic eruption 11 million years ago. Some microorganisms were previously prevalent throughout the state, but due to an increase in livestock and farming, only small isolated groups remain. One of the issues is that stock cattle, in particular, are hard-hoofed animals, and as they go around the pasture, they effectively chop up the soil crusts and convert them to dust. If there's a strong sandstorm or a windy day, microorganisms will simply be blown away along with the topsoil. This is exactly what's happening as of late, and scientists are worried that it will only get worse. Next, we have the impact of farming. According to Orange Field Naturalist Society member Richard Med, losing microorganisms like mosses and lichens will set off a chain reaction. This is because all of those species interact with each other, so removing one or two would have an impact on several others. None None of the linked ecosystems would survive, since breaking them up causes chaos. Mount Cannibolis, according to Med, is a rare refuge for microscopic species, so when their communities become fragmented, they lose their integrity and ecosystems begin to break down. This phenomenon isn't a one-off occurrence, by the way. Similar patterns have been observed in important habitats across Australia, including the deserts, the Great Barrier Reef, and alpine ranges. Farming is to blame for a lot of biodiversity loss across the globe, as grassland for cattle and other livestock stock takes up a large portion of agricultural land. Hundreds of millions of acres are set aside for this purpose in the western United States alone, including both government-administered and privately owned grazing lands, which is more than any other land use. Agricultural livestock makes up a significant amount of global greenhouse gas emissions, particularly methane. The biggest problem with cattle? They don't know when to stop eating. Overgrazing is a huge issue in terms of environmental sustainability. In some areas, pasture land is depleted to the point where grasses are are unable to recover. Native vegetation's root systems can be severely harmed, resulting in the extinction of the species and microorganisms. As seen on Mount Cannibolis, nutrient runoff is causing soil erosion and degradation of topsoil quality. Scientists fear that this, along with other effects, has the potential to disrupt a wide range of delicate ecosystems and wildlife habitats. And now, a new species found. It's not all bad though. The Mount Cannibolis ecology wasn't all doom and gloom, as researchers have discovered at least 50 15 new species in the area. Polytrichum commune is a moss species that can be found in Tasmania's alpine regions and the snowy mountains. During a survey of Mount Cannibolis, Dr. Med came across the bryophyte organism. It's pretty exciting, even though it's not a particularly rare species, but it's the first time researchers have ever seen it there. In 2018, a blaze destroyed around 70% of Mount Cannibolis. Dr. Med believes that the fire allowed microorganisms that had been dormant in the soil to emerge, resulting in the discovery of this new species. Nature is fantastic. Finally, a safe haven. Cryptogams at the Mount Cannibalist State Conservation Area were recently surveyed by scientists from Canberra and Sydney, who sampled minute organisms like mosses, liverworts, hornworts, and lichens. Often ignored in the landscape, what most people don't know is that these microorganisms play an important pioneering role in ecosystems, allowing other plants to eventually succeed. Mount Cannibalist, being an isolated, mostly wild landscape surrounded by highly developed agricultural regions has offered a haven for approximately 1,000 kinds of flora and animals that would have otherwise been uncommon throughout the area. It's easy to overlook endemic species, which have a highly limited geographic distribution and occur naturally nowhere else. Endemic species face the same challenges as species that have been formally designated as threatened, vulnerable, or endangered. The endemics of Mount Cannibolis are now isolated and restricted to the residual mountain terrain, and because their numbers are naturally limited, they're considered 
considered rare and vulnerable, disturbance and fragmentation of such habitat remaining are two of the most serious dangers to all of the species that still exist in this cherished natural subalpine setting. It's a landscape that has never really been thoroughly examined as a whole. With studies like these, we hope to have a better understanding and appreciation of these ecosystems, and hopefully saving them from extinction. Time for some other related news. Starting with evidence of life millions of years ago, scientists at West Virginia University believe they have discovered living bacteria in an 830 million year old halite sample, providing insight into previous life and habitats. They examined 10 halite beds and cut the halite into one to two millimeter pieces using a razor blade. The researchers used non-invasive optical methods to examine neoproterozoic halite, which allowed the halite to remain intact throughout the investigation and eliminated the potential of contamination by current species. The identified halite crystals and fluid inclusions, or water trapped as the halite crystals developed, using transmitted light petrography. Scientists also observed what was inside the fluid inclusions, including microorganisms like bacteria, algae, and fungi. The exciting news is that some of these 830 million year old microbes may still be alive. The researchers used high magnification and UV visible light to see what was within the individual fluid inclusions. Microorganisms that had lived in the water at the crystal surface millions of years ago. And now they're working on the tricky part of it all, which is determining whether the microbes are still alive and how they've lasted this long. And now a rare creature discovered. Another rare discovery worth celebrating. The Shelta cave crayfish, or Connectus sheltae, is a tiny species of crayfish that exists in a cave that belongs to the National Speleological Society, NSS. Dr. John Cooper, a biologist and member of the NSS, researched the Shelta cave crayfish for the first time in the 1960s as part of his dissertation. Crayfish diversity was formally abundant in the cave, with at least three species of crayfish alone, and a total of 12 cave-dependent species. To date, no other cave system in the United States contains more reported cave crayfishes co-occurring with each other than this one. The fact that the Shelta cave crayfish is still alive is unquestionably wonderful news, but it highlights the species' perilous status as a groundwater-dependent species beneath a city. The crayfish can only survive as long as the groundwater is clean and plentiful, which is largely regulated by people. The Shelta cave crayfish isn't alone. Caves are home to a variety of species, some of which live only in one cave in the United States. These ecosystems are easily missed because they're not visible, but they hold vast worlds of life and geology in the balance of our decisions. And lastly, reinventing farming. We're all recognizing the need for a shift in farming methods. Enter regenerative farming, a kind of farming that focuses on increasing soil and water quality to grow a varied range of plants and food, and retaining organic matter in the soil to aid crop growth. While such farms are currently few and far between, an increasing number of food producers are examining whether it's a concept whose time has come, as many are being buffeted by cost headwinds, subsidy loss, and mounting costs. Since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the price of the three Fs, fertilizer, animal feed, and fuel, has risen dramatically. The kind of shambles the world economy is in, all this is only expected to get worse. Regenerative farming claims that if people ate a diet rich in fruits and vegetables and less meat, particularly from cows fed grain rather than grass, such systems could feed countries without an issue. The National Farmers Union in the UK wants to reach net zero food production by 2040, and its members are working to do more to farm the land in a climate-friendly manner. The risks of a hasty agricultural transformation have been on the rise in recent months, as we saw in Sri Lanka, following the country's president's unexpected ban on all chemical fertilizers. It prompted farmers' fears of financial disaster and reliance on foreign food imports. Regenerative farming could be the next big thing for agriculture workers across the globe, as well as the solution to losses in biodiversity. We've got our fingers crossed. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think farming is the biggest culprit behind the loss of biodiversity? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.